I will show you how to make a cool looking ability like this shocking touch. Making cool looking abilities can be a tough task, especially if you're just focusing on programming and you're not really having any talent for art. I was facing the same issue when I started my game development journey more than a year ago. And unless you're extremely lucky to have someone to rely on that is making the art for you, for the most part you're on your own. But you all want our games to be successful, right? And hopefully sell enough so we can keep pursuing our dream of being a game developer. First create a 16 by 32 sprite. If you want you can make it longer if you want to have a bigger lighting effect. So the way this is gonna work, we are going to repeat this texture for however long the lightning bolt needs to be. If for example we have a chain lighting that is twice as long as this sprite, we are just going to append the sprite below and make it seem like it's one beam. So we start with a normal beam and what I like to do is create a couple of thick portions and a couple of thin portions. Now, what I often like to do in when I create this type of stuff, I switch into tiled mode on the Y axis. That will give me an extension of the lighting beam and it allows me to edit this a bit better. So in my opinion, a good lighting strike has thick and thin portions. So we can you know, try to make it as thick and thin looking as we can. Okay, I feel like this is good. Now, just for clarity, I'm going to make another layer and paste the black behind it so we can see the beam better. And if we need a grid, we are going to add in the grid by pressing Ctrl G. Okay, so now we have this beam. That looks okay for now. We're going, we are going to add in details later. Now it's time to create another frame by pressing Alt N on your keyboard. That will give us the exact same frame. And what I like to do, let's actually center this kind of difficult to see. We take the top part, move it down, and then take the bottom part and move it up so that we are still kind of centered. But what this does is it makes it so that the beam moves down. Then we can add in a couple of details. Now I'm not gonna spend in too much time, but this is going to be the strike hitting. So I usually try to add in some extra cool details. Don't have to do that. I just feel like that this is making it look more crazy. Okay, so we have the next frame. Now create a new one and we do the same thing. We take the bottom part and God damn it. Actually have to move the part here to the left and then move that part to the right. Move it up, move that one down. Now we're gonna have to do some frame shenanigans to see if that should be okay. It's definitely moving in a direction. Okay, so this is going to be a frame that's almost identical. Maybe we can change it a little bit, but not by much. Maybe remove some of the strikes that we added. But it definitely needs to fl uh, follow a flow. As you can see on the bottom right, it does follow a flow, which is important. Okay, we make another frame. And this is where we start to make the beam disappear. So we remove even more. And at this point, it doesn't need to move anymore, I think. We're just going to start thinning it, thinning it out. Maybe keep a couple of those bolts just a tiny bit. Doesn't need to be perfect. And then in the next frame, it's almost going to be completely gone. Again, doesn't need to be perfect. It's going to look great in the end anyways. And then in the last frame, we could make it entirely disappear or skip the frame. I like skipping the frame. If you like making six frames, make six frames. I'm just gonna not do that. Okay, so now that we have our frames, which looks something like this, looks kind of nice already. Okay, but it's just this is just some motion that's boring. And so what we need to do to make it lighting is to add in white spots or very bright spots. For example, I like doing that around the edges. I'm using like this kind of yellow here. If you wanna make it look real good, I suggest you to pick up a color palette. I got my color palette from lowspec.com. I'll put the link in the description and then you can sort by downloads or by newest, whatever you want. But for this one, I'm actually using the lowspec 500. You might recognize the colors here. If you're new to this, which for example, I was in the beginning, I'm starting to learn how to do my own color palette, uh, but it's just easier to get one yourself. So I think this is fine. We have like some lighting. Actually, I don't really like this color. Let's try using actual white, replace that. Looks much better already. Okay, so we have a couple of white pixels in the first frame. In the next frame, we're going to add many more white pixels. So this is gonna take a while or we almost turn it entirely white. And for that, the easiest is to go over here to the top where it says ink 
and change that to shading, which will give you this menu over here. And how that works is you're selecting one color with your mouse and then you can press control and select another color, which should be this one right here. And then you have these two colors in the menu, which will allow you to write over these colors, but not write anywhere else. You see me pasting color right here. We have my right mouse button, but I'm not painting any color outside, which helps me paint this in real quickly. And so I just wanna like quickly do that. Make it as bright as possible almost entirely white so that's very bright compared to this right this is the hit and then in the next frame we do the same we make this almost entirely white leave in a couple of blue pixels but this is basically the hit boom and then we start fading out again which in this case i like to introduce a darker blue and so i do the same thing with selecting the two colors for shading and I start shading this time with my left mouse button and then in the last frame we can do the same doesn't need to be perfect and we are golden so this is looking almost like in a lightning attack already very nice you can see it best let me remove these bzzt, bzzt, bzzt. you can see it very nice on the right here but there's one more bonus trick that we can do we create another layer and then in this layer layer 3 we move that down below layer 1 and then we go to layer 1 copy the contents of it and move them to layer 3 and i don't know if there's a way to copy all the layers into here but let's repeat that for all the layers okay now that we have all the layers copied the bonus trick is to go over here to edit top left into FX convolution matrix or F9. And that will give us a glow. And it depends on what you want. I wouldn't go too crazy. I don't know if there's other matrices to choose from, but many of these effects look kind of nice. Like the diagon diagonal one for this looks kind of good. And so, what, but for this one, I like to use the normal blur, which is fine. Blur three by three. And we do that for every layer. And that gives us a nice glowy lightning strike or chain lighting effect you could also make this bigger if you want the possibilities are endless but yeah next time you have to make an ability try to add in one of these glowing effects because it really adds to the gameplay in my opinion okay that's all i have for now i hope you enjoyed this small tutorial about abilities i feel like there's not enough of that out there so if you liked it and want me to do more of this in the future leave a like or maybe a comment of what you want to see next and i'll see you then have a good one peace if you like what i do consider tuning into my twitch I stream at 10 a.m. Central Eastern Time, which is 1 a.m. Pacific Daytime. I also want to thank all my Patreons who are supporting me on this journey. Sully, Daniel Scobo, Techbox North, Shruptor, Michael Phillips, Felix F. and Mio Mio the Writer. Thank you very much for supporting me. As a thank you of mine, Patreons get access to the source code of the game and occasionally I post pixel art that can be used for free.